in terms of internet gaming in particular, the, there's been quite an evolution over the years. Can you kind of go back to the beginning and the policies uh, or yeah, viewpoints? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to do it quickly, but it's, it is an interesting history. Um, I think it was in 1996, I was invited to speak in St. Louis, Missouri to a meeting of the uh, National Association of States Attorneys General. The AGs in each of the 50 states have an organization and they were meeting in St. Louis and I was gonna be the luncheon speaker and I went out early and because I was early, I sat in on some of the sessions. And one of the sessions back in 96 uh, was on internet wagering. And the room was packed with AGs who were very upset. They knew that people in their jurisdictions, in their states, were logging on to offshore websites, were placing bets without any statutory authorization in their states, without any consumer protection, and without any taxes being paid to the states. So while attorneys general guard very, very vigorously uh, the 10th Amendment right of each state to determine what goes on within their borders, they realize because of the ubiquitous nature of the web, there's no way that they could control it. So they drafted a bill, a very, very tough bill, uh, that would have outlawed all, all forms of internet gambling in the United States, making it a felony for the website operator and a felony for the better. And that bill was delivered by the National Association of States Attorneys General to a United States Senator from Arizona named John Kyle, K-Y-L. Senator Kyle introduced it in the Senate. It went to the Senate Judiciary Committee, who immediately stripped out of the legislation any penalty for the better. Uh, the way it was explained to me, they didn't want some guy came home from work, went online, uh, bet $20 on the Washington Redskins to end up being a felon for the rest of their life. So, over the last uh, 20 years, almost, any legislation has never had a crime for the better located in the U.S. There's six or seven states that have statutes, but I've never seen anyone uh, prosecuted. That bill never got out of the, the Senate. And the next session, it was introduced again. It, it got out of the Senate, went over to the House. It was just about the time that the United States Supreme Court had struck down uh, a, a congressional a bill which was dealing with the pornography on the internet. And it was felt that this legislation, the internet bill would also fall by the wayside because of that. It wasn't until maybe eight years, nine years later when uh, a member of Congress named Mike Oxley uh, of Sarbanes-Oxley fame, uh, who was a former FBI agent, became the chairman of the uh, House Financial Services Committee. I played golf with Ox on a regular basis and he explained to me one day that even if the Kyle bill had passed and other iterations of it, nothing would have changed since all the websites are located offshore outside the jurisdiction of the United States and since it's not a crime for the better in the U.S., conduct wouldn't be changed. And he was the first one to come up with a means to attack the financial part of internet wagering. I testified before that committee on the Hill along with Visa and MasterCard representatives, it's about 10 years ago now, 12 years ago now, and uh, even before the bill got out of the house, uh, American Express and Discover Card said that they were getting out of the business. Eventually, Visa and MasterCard got out of the business. The federal government and the New York Attorney General's uh, office went uh, uh, after eBay, who was p purchasing PayPal. They went after, uh, sending telegrams, I've got a mental block. Western Union, Western Union. Western Union agreed they were getting out of the business and the bill hadn't even passed. And that bill passed out a couple of times and it really didn't go anywhere. It eventually became the unlawful Internet Gaming Enforcement Act, UGIA, which was passed in the, in the dark of night. And so that's how we got involved. We, for all those years, it was the official position of the American Gaming Association and I still know it by heart because I said it 10, thousand times. The American Gaming Association opposes all forms of internet wagering as we do not believe the technology exists with proper law enforcement oversight to regulate it. Dave, how many times have you heard that? You've said a lot of times for me over the years. Uh, that changed. That slowly evolved. And it evolved when first world nations in Europe started legalizing it. And through the use of biometrics, on geolocation, we could ensure who the person was placing the bet and where they were. 
And it was uh, about two and a half years ago that our board changed their position uh, to be supportive of it. But at that time, and still to this day, it's the position of our board that we seek federal legislation to legalize online poker only. So that's kind of where we are. That's a lot capsulized in a few minutes. 